welcome to the next lecture of metrology and instrumentation this is salman assistant assistant professor department of mechanical engineering isl engineering college so in today's lecture we are going to discuss about uh, gear metrology so before understanding the gear metrology let us see um, what are uh, what are the various types of gear what are the types of errors and what are the terminologies which generally come across in gear so first of all let us uh, see what is a gear generally a gears are generally used for the transmission of power between the two shafts either it is parallel shaft or perpendicular shaft so generally it is used to transmit the power and as well as the motion okay uh, if you take in gear box we will transmit the speeds from various ranges either it is from lower speed to higher speed basing upon the type of motion we are going to get okay Uh, the the profile is to obtain ex exact uh, velocity ratio that is that is nothing but if you are having a ratio of a small gear with a mesh with a big gear for example if you are having a gear in which the power transmission is more and you are, if you want to reduce the speed of that uh, gear then what do you do is we attach with a larger gear okay if the gear is becomes larger than that of the original power then what happens the velocity will be reduce that that is we must have an accurate profile to exact to obtain the exact velocity ratio there are mostly two common profiles which you generally come across in gears that is nothing but involute profile and cycloidal profile involute profile is nothing but the path described by the point and extensible cord which is unwound from the stationary cylinder cycloid is nothing but the curve traced by a point on the rim of the circle where it is rotating without slipping in a straight line okay so generally we are having uh, different types of gear the very first or most common type of gear which we come across regularly nothing but spur gear this might be uh, this again you might be studying in your machine design and all these things are even you might be study you might have studied this in your kinematics of machineries where you might have studied what is a gear terminology is what is a spur gear means so in spur gear generally the the tooth is generally aligned parallel to the axis if you see here here we are having a so this is your axis and this teeth is uh, having a parallel to the axis okay the edge whereas helical gears helical gears will be the gears in which the the gear teeth are will not be parallel to the axis but whereas it will be aligned uh, to some angle okay so the angle the teeth uh, this will uh, what happens uh, with comparison of uh, spur gear and helical gear is nothing but the power transmission in, with respect to spur gear the helical gear will do more because uh, as they are angled they will be in a uh, they will be in contact for a larger period of time whereas in spur gear what happens once they come into contact immediately they will lose their contact when it is once it is rotated but whereas this uh, in helical gears there will be a smooth running as well as there is a uh, power transmission will be more the next thing if you want to transmit the power between two uh, perpendicular shafts generally we go for bevel gears okay so uh, these are the bevel gears in which you can see that these are the angles which are uh, aligned in such a way that they will help to transmit the uh, sh power from between the two perpendicular shaft this is vertical shaft this is horizontal shaft similarly worm and uh, worm wheel so the worm and worm wheel or worm gear is nothing but uh, this is a gear on which uh, this is a worm this is a worm wheel okay on which there is uh, the type of helical gear but it is not helix angle it's somewhat larger than that so it is generally used for the transmission from rotational to linear motion okay next is nomenclature of uh, gears we have already studied about the screws the same thing will be here addendum dedendum uh, this is a circular pitch tooth thickness width width of space between the tooth uh, pitch circle pitch circle is nothing but the average thing which uh, between the two that is nothing but addendum and dedendum the average is nothing but the pitch circle where the teeth are come into contact this is a flank this is a face okay generally the tooth comes in contact between the flange that is wide uh, width of the space okay they will come in contact here okay so if if the power is more means uh, this will take that power the face and the flange will take the power okay gear terminal base circle it is a circle from where uh, from which the gear teeth are generated pitch circle it is an imaginary circle by pu pure rolling action which produces same motion as the tooth wheel that is meant in the direction which you are trying to rotate the size of the gear is usually specified by the pitch of the circle the pitch circle diameter pitch point it is a common point of contact between the two pitches of two meshing gear that is nothing but if two gears are there if they are meshing together if there is a common point where they come in contact okay if they are the two gears are coming in contact like this so if they will have a, a common point that point is called as pitch point ne similarly pressure angle it is an angle between the common normal to the two gear teeth 
of two uh, at the point of contact means when they are coming in contact at that point there will be a uh, pressure created generally at that point of contact when the two teeth are coming in contact like this so at the point of contact will be having a uh, common normal at, at pitch point that at this point actually so that uh, at that point we will be having an uh, angle generated at that common normal that angle is nothing but called as pressure angle okay next to the addendum it is the radial distance from the pitch to top of the uh, top of the tooth next to the addendum it is the radial distance from the pitch to the base of the tooth next is face it is a part of the tooth surface which is above the pitch circle flank is the part of the tooth on the uh, that is one which is on the face side of face surface of the tooth okay circular pitch it is a distance measured on the circumference of the pitch circle from the point on the tooth to corresponding point on adjacent tooth so from one circle to other from one teeth to other teeth generally so it is a pitch circle which is measured as a distance of circumference from one tooth to other tooth you can see here from one point on one tooth to the corresponding next adjacent tooth modulo it is the ratio of pitch circle that we write as generally p by n p by n is nothing but pitch, pitch circle diameter to the number of tooths so this will this will decide how many number of teeth should be present on the particular gear face width it is the width of the gear tooth measured parallel to the axis there are few errors which you generally come across uh, while measurement of uh, or metrology of gears is nothing but profile error the maximum distance from a point on the tooth profile form to des uh, design profile that is nothing but if you have designed the profile uh, you have taken a maximum distance of a point on the tooth profile from the base either uh, either it is from the base or from the pitch circle okay generally we consider for profile it will consider from the base circle that is nothing but from the root of the teeth sorry root of the gear pitch error the difference between the actual and the design pitch so what is the actual design you have given for the uh, gear but what what is actually can be possible in the gear next is cyclic error error occurs in uh, each revolution of the gear when it is trying to rotate during rotation there will be some errors occurring that type of errors are called as cyclic errors run out so run out is nothing but the total range of readings of fixed indicator within the contact points applied to the surface rotated without axial movement about the fixed axis so when they are running between the two axial movement so they will be they will be just slipping slipping happens between the two roots then it is called as run out eccentric is nothing but already we know what is eccentric is nothing but if it is shifted from the axis okay then it is called as eccentric half the radial run out so whatever the uh, the center distance is there from there it has been shifted wobble uh, is the run out of the measured parallel to the axis of rotation at a specified distance from the axis so from the axis if you have moved from to parallel to some distance for example this is your axis you have moved parallel that is called as wobble radial run out means from the axis to perpendicularly away so this is your axis from this you have moved away so then it is called as radial run out okay axial run out is nothing but the run out measured parallel to the axis of rotation at a speed so these errors are just for name sake uh, these are never asked so systematic errors which we have in your uh, which we discussed in our uh, mid 2 is a uh, different type the following elements are checked while uh, carrying out the measurement so first thing which we measure in uh, metrology of gears is nothing but tooth thickness addendum addendum depth number of teeth uh, next is pitch variation involute profile what is the profile what are the types of run out black clash contact area noise so the gear measurement run based upon this actually run out pitch profile lead backlash tooth thickness concentric alignment alignment is nothing but how far they are able to shift to one another okay run out testing it means the eccentricity in the pitch circle eccentricity is nothing but instead of sitting at the center it has been moved to some uh, axis it gives the periodic vibration during the each revolution of the angle when it is being rotated it will, it will give it a jerk because of uh, eccentric it will not rotate evenly it will give uh, every every revolution will have some amount of shifting so that will uh, create the whole uh, machine into vibrations okay the run out is measured by means of eccentric thrusters in this testing procedure the gears are placed in a mandrel okay so and we connect with the dial gauge so when it is being test uh, that vibrations are coming the what happens means you can see this image here uh, so this is the image so we'll uh, these are the two just like your lathe machine will be having a uh, two mandrels one is fixed double one is movable so this is movable this is fixed so in between these two we connect a mandrel onto that we gear will be fixed and we we'll try to rotate it so when it is rotating if it is uh, not eccentric what happens the 
there will be no deflections in the dial gauge if it is not uh, if it is eccentric what happens because of eccentric it will start vibrating in the means it will be jumping it will not evenly rotate so because of that what happens to the plunger is the plunger will try to shift up down up down up down which will give you the positive or negative deflections in the your dial gauge okay so the next is pitch measurement pitch measurement we generally do from uh, by keeping from point to point method or uh, direct angle method so point to point method is nothing but we know that this is a pitch circle we will average addendum so from that point we will keep the another side we will be having a dial gauge so in this this is a sensitive tip we, we touch this with, with the, uh, the variations can be observed here next one is fixed double one is adjustable so we will adjust these two in such a way so when it touches this uh, pitch circle okay so we will get the deflections in this okay so this is point to point so from one point to one point we are at point to point measurement we call so one is fixed measuring measuring tip and the second is a sensitive tip whose position so point to point measurement in which we have one fix one is fixed measuring tip and the second is sensitive tip whose position can be adjusted based upon the screw and third is adjustable or a guide stop the distance between the fixed and the sensitive tip is equivalent to that of the base pitch of the gear okay all these three tips should be kept in contact with the instrument where we are trying to measure if these are not in contact the reading and the diameter will surely give you them some error in the base pitch circle profile checking the method of the method used for profile checking is nothing but object optical projection method involute measuring method optical projection method is nothing but we will try to use some optical lenses then the projected value we will try to measure by using a master profile okay so whatever the profile you are having for this gear basing on that we will try to uh, compare and we will try to see that either, either it is uh, perfect or not okay lead checking it is uh, checked by checking the instrumentations actually lead is the ac uh, axial advance of the helix for one complete turn so how if you are turning the helix gear for one complete rotation so how far it is uh, turning how much lead it is taking either it is moving forward to how many uh, how many values we can say so the lead checking instruments are advances a probe along the tooth surface parallel to the axis okay backlash measurement is nothing but the the measurement of the distance through which a gear can be rotated in non working flank in contact with the gear so the numerical values of backlash is measured at the tightest point on the mesh so this can be done by two techniques one is uh, Circle, uh, circumferential backlash another is normal backlash so next is measurement of tooth thickness generally tooth thickness can be measured by using a uh, vernier caliper itself so this is a special type of vernier calipers in which we will be having the height gauge like this okay this uh, it will be having both so it will go deep inside we will fix this basing on that we can able to measure the uh, thickness of the gear the next is constant chord method and another is base tangent method the measurement by dimensions over pin okay so the, uh, the two thickness can be conveniently measured by using gear tooth vernier since the two thickness varies from tip to the tip of the base circle to the instrument must be capable to measure from the two thickness okay so the two thickness is generally measured at the base circle and it is therefore referred as pitch line thickness so uh, consider one tooth which is a uh, theoretical value is w and uh, d can be found with the help of verified the instrument also the d is nothing but the depth adjusted to the instrumentation so you know what is uh, how we are going to measure in vernier caliper we will take the vernier caliper we will try to uh, touch it since it touches the face touches this and how deep it goes inside basing on that we can able to measure the thickness of the teeth okay so next is uh, how this this is a your measurement technique okay let us see this so we know that w is equal to ab is equal to 2d that is nothing but the thickness so this is your ab we consider that it is equally divided at the axis and that is nothing but at the center of the gear teeth that is 2 into ad now what is this aod you see a o d this is your angle theta so why we are taking this angle is nothing but to measure this ad distance to measure this ad distance so ad q is equal to 360 by 4 n 360 by 4 n so n is the number of teeth how many number of teeth has been divided for the teeth next is n is uh, w is equal to 2 ad is equal to 2 ao sin q so this angle is known if you want to measure this distance how will you measure we know this is uh, my what we say um, hypotenuse 
So this is my opposite side, opposite by hypotenuse. We can write it as 2a q sin, q. but whereas theta is nothing but 360 by 4n, which is nothing but which circle radius that you, we convert into in terms of modules. We convert in terms of modules. That is 2 into a y is nothing but the radius of the circle. Okay, r into sin 360 by 4n. So, module m is equal to PCD by uh, number of t's, it is nothing but the total circumference of circle divided by n, generally we write pi by n, so 2r by n, so r is equal to nm by 2, where n is the number of t's, m is module divided by 2, if you do this, we will get the value of w as n into m, number of t's into module into sin of 360 by 4n, also from the figure d is equal to oc minus, sorry, d is equal to oc, total radius till the face, face of the t divided minus this distance, the radius of this which we have identified, ad value, okay, this ad value I identified now. So, in the same way, we will try to calculate OD minus, uh, OC minus OD, OC is equal to OE plus addendum, OE is nothing but R, R plus addendum is M. So, uh, R we can even write it as this value N into M by 2 plus M. So, we got the value OD is equal to R cos, cos Q, Y we you know that this is adjacent side to the theta. So, we can take it as OD is equal to R cos Q. Similarly, you take this both values and you can measure the depth of it. So, here we have identified the thickness as well as depth of it. Okay. So, next is uh, constant chord technique. Why we go for constant chord technique is nothing but uh, vernier method like constant chord technique and constant addendums are dependent upon the number of t's. Due to this uh, measuring large number of gear becomes a difficult calculation because we should not remember number of t's. So, these difficulties can be avoided by using the constant chord technique. So, what is the property we see uh, with, with respect to which we can able to measure the constant chord method is nothing but if an involute tooth is considered symmetrically in, in, in close with the mesh with the back back rack form. Okay. So, if you see this in here we will try to draw a chord. A chord is nothing but the uh, part part of, uh, from a circle, if this is a circle, we draw a card from here, ok. So, the efficient for measuring the large number of gears, each having number of teeth but same module, ok, all will be measured by using the same principle, you can see from the this diagram, let us try to solve this. So, now, now I want to measure this thickness B E, but what we consider is, we consider in this way, the flat surface, ok, uh, which is normally even though it is curvature we try to assume it is to be inclined one, ok. So, from the triangle B D B E is equal to arc B E that is equal to half of the pitch circle, Y means from point to point, from this point to the next point it is called as pitch. So, this is half, so this is this two is half, another two is half. So, this will be considered as one fourth of the pitch circle or circular pitch. So, one fourth of the circular pitch is nothing but pi into PCD, P, last, last we have seen that, PCD by that is nothing but pitch circle diameter divided by N, that is nothing but uh, what we write as generally R by M, R by N, that is nothing but module, okay, that is nothing but module, R by N is equal to module, you can see in the previous slides also, 1 by 4 into pi into PCD by N, that is equal to 1 by 4 into pi into M, so this is nothing but called as module, okay, we have got the value. So, how this pitch circle is coming nothing but one third of the pitch circle, pitch, uh, circle pi into PCD into N. Okay. So, in the triangle ABD, in the triangle A, B and D. So, this is the ABD triangle. AB is equal to, we take this, AB is equal to, since this is hypotenuse side, AB is equal to BD cos phi, correct. We have taken the angle, this as phi, which is created here. Similarly, in triangle BAC, B. A C okay A C is equal to this side flat side okay the A C is equal to A B cos now we have got the value for A B B D cos phi here also we, when you do this multiplication we will get it as A B square cos phi A B square cos sorry A B cos square phi so what is A B A B is similar to this A B is similar to the value that is pi by four of m pi by four of and you take this value, you substitute here, you will get the answer. C is the constant chord 2 into AC, W is equal to C is equal to 0 0.5 pi m into cos square phi, where phi is the pressure angle which is created at the common normal or the pitch, pitch point. 
okay next is base tangent method this is simple method here also we will take from one point to other point we will consider uh, the, this method is used by Devin Brown tar uh, target comparator to measure the span of the convenient number of teeth for how many number of teeth we want we can measure that by using that number we will can able to divide the number of teeth and so be able to measure the value of it okay so w is equal to r k b plus r b c so again the same procedure r b c is equal to 2 pi by n because 360 degrees are divided into n number of teeth into s is nothing but the tooth space present in between them into n m by 2 is nothing but again the n into module divided by 2 into cos phi same procedure which you have seen earlier okay so this is the base tangent method so this this is a device so when you keep this this you can see the alignment you can see to some little extent okay so these are the few things which you are going to check next we are going to measure uh, the geometric metrology by using so these are not required in your important is parkinson gear tester so what is what is this parkinson gear tester is nothing but we can able to measure the uh alignment okay if two gears are parallel to one another or not if there is some uh, what do we say if one size we are having is it able to properly set the axis distance will be fixed here if two meshings are done here this will be under whichever the this is a master test sometimes the master test will be here this is a measuring device so whichever the gear you want to measure you will take you will bring that gear you will fix on to this axis you will be having as uh, what we says plunger here or spring here with respect to which you can able to pull this and you can arrange this after that you, you will try to rotate the master gear so when it is being rotated if the rotations are proper then you will get this kind of eccentricity which means they are aligned properly they are aligned properly if when they are vib being vibrated if the vibrations are not proper then the dial gauge will give this kind of things if this is done means they are okay they can this can be used there are some small major errors but not but not uh, but it is under acceptable condition if it is coming like this means if the variations are too much if the axes are not properly arranged then what happens the gears will be uh, colliding with one another because of that you will be getting this kind of figure it means uh, they are not satisfied with one another so we have to change the axes or we have to change the number of teeth for that teeth okay the master gear is fixed on vertical spindle and gear to be tested is fixed on similar spindle which is to be mounted on the carriage the carriage which can slide either side and these gears are maintained in a mesh by spring pressure this what i told the spring there will be a spring by which we drag it and we will uh, arrange them and then they will come into meshing with one another when the gears are rotated the, the movement of the sliding carriage is indicated by a dial gauge so when the both are rotating properly if they are aligned uh, in a proper way you can you will get this eccentric rotation if they are not aligned then you will get this type of alignment this is the thing you have written okay so what is if any errors in the tooth form when gears are in close mesh the pitch or the pitch are concentric or any kind of vibrations you you come across those will be detected by using the dial gauge so what is the limitation of parkinson gear test is nothing but accuracy plus 0.01 mm only so till plus or minus of 0.001 so till 1 by 1000 uh, that is nothing but 1 by 10 to the power of sorry 10 to the power of minus 3 mm so the maximum gear distance or the maximum uh, center distance between the two gears is 300 if you are using big gears they cannot able to sit in this parkinson gear test you have to limit it to uh, the center distance of 300 means from one gear to other gear maximum of 300 from the center this distance you generally say so this is maximum of 300 it should not go beyond that center distance between the two gears okay the measurement depends upon the master gear so the low friction and the movement of the floating carriage so the, the when they are rotating in the on the carriage this is the carriage so already everything is written here this is the carriage okay so this carriage when it is rotating it should be having low friction because because of the, the small small variations itself the what we say the dial gauge variations are being observed if it is having friction it will take more time to rotate so because of that the, there will be uh, improper readings which can be obtained on the dial gauge so in this way we try to measure the gear metrology okay